a sobering day today is. As you would have read by the title on the, on the video. I have to let this bad boy go. So today, this ride is the last time I get to ride her. Unfortunately, because I'm trading it in for another bike. And I'm not going to tell you what bike it is yet. You'll have to see for the next video. But uh, she's been good to me. I mean, what a bike. I bought this bike in 2016, brand new. Basically put every single part on it from the KTM Power Parts catalogue, except for the suspension. Um, and she hasn't missed a beat, beat since. Been absolutely unreal. I'll certainly miss this bike. It's been so good to me. I've done so many things on this bike which have you know been really good highlights of my life been to Tasmania a couple times on this uh, granted it's not the best touring bike actually the petrol the fuel economy on this is pretty good um, over in Tassie I get you know roughly 300 320 k's to a tank uh, riding around streets here in, in Victoria I get you know maybe 250 Yeah, as I said, it's not the best touring bike. You have to sort out your luggage. You know, I've been wearing a backpack, have a towel bag, and you can only take so little gear with you. Um, you can't really do, you know, extended uh, travel on it. Yeah, man, I have not had one one issue with this bike. Actually, sorry, the one issue that I have had with this bike that a few other guys have had as well is the rear tail light. And I think it goes back to the 2014 model as well. Is that the rear tail light is um, held in by two screws and they're just plastic. And for whatever reason, it, it must have just wiggled loose and it actually broke um, the brackets. And they were going to charge me, I think at the part here in Australia was $650 for a new tail light. So I thought, you know, stuff that. I'm not going to waste my money on that. The tail light still works, it's just the brackets. So I tried using, you know, Araldite, like two-part epoxy to stick it back together. Um, that kind of worked, and then I just used uh, Gorilla Tape for the rest. Um, and ever since it's held, been held in place fine, so... So that's the only problem that I've had with this bike. Everything else has been sweet. So whilst we sit at these lights, well I've got an awesome view of the back of a truck. Um, I'll explain why I'm why I'm getting rid of it. So I've had it for, as I said, since 2016. Um, I don't actually ride it that much. So for nine months, say nine, ten months of the year, it basically sits in my garage, not even being ridden. Um, so there's that. The other part is, as I said before, it, it's hard to tour on and I do like to ride my bikes you know some distance you know put some luggage on it and stay overnight somewhere or do day trips and you know it is it is a comfortable bike I must admit um, but it's not the most comfortable I can't ride this bike every day as well 
because I don't want to be commuting on it. I don't want to put lots of miles on it. And I don't want to park it in places where people, you know, constantly fiddle with it and, you know, potentially kick it over and, and draw all over it because it is a nice looking bike. So that's that's the main reasons. The other reasons are is that it's out of warranty period now. I usually do change up my bikes um, every three, four years, around about there on average. Um, I've had I've had lots of bikes throughout my life. You know, dirt bikes. I've had uh, multiple GSX R thousands. I've had an R one. Had an MT09, MT10 SP. I've had this. Uh, I've had lots. And some of which you can see on my channel. I'll tell you what, I'm going to miss that, that torque. There's no other bike out there that can match this in terms of torque and just how aggressive this is. It really is just a joy to ride this thing. I love it. I love having that that big thumping V-twin between your legs, you know, vibrating on your knackers. It's a, um, it's a great feeling. And it's, it's a sad day, it really is, because in all honesty, this is probably my favourite bike that I've owned. Um, and potentially the fa most favourite bike I've, I've ever ridden. And I've ridden quite a, quite a lot of bikes. Um, I've definitely put this thing through its paces. Uh, the, the one thing I haven't done on this, which I I kind of regret, is I haven't actually taken it on track yet. Um, so that's, yeah, that's a bit of a letdown, but, you know, it is what it is. It just didn't, the times didn't line up, the timing and so forth, because uh, it takes a lot of planning, a lot to go to the track and, and a lot of expense, and it just never happened, so... It would have been good on track. I reckon I would have uh, would have set pretty good times on this down Phillip Island. Uh, she would have been pretty exciting coming out on some of those corners at full lean. I don't know if you can tell, but these lights down here, it's not warnings. They're actually saying that the um, traction control and ABS is uh, switched off uh, permanently. I've got the dongle plugged into this. Uh, I don't like any intervention um, in my bike, so if I can turn stuff off, I will. And it's not because I'm a hero, it's just that's the way I like to ride my bikes. Um, I started off when all this uh, electronic stuff wasn't around. And I've learned to, um, to ride some very, very fast bikes without traction control and ABS and all that. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, it's not worth it because I've ridden many bikes with traction control and it actually helps a lot you can come out of turns a lot quicker um, you know accelerate quicker you can sometimes you can brake harder depending on the ABS system um, I find that a lot of ABS systems these days are very intrusive uh, this one this one wasn't too bad but I, I ended up turning it off anyway um, I've got upgraded brake pads on this I've got Brembo race pads and also the um, the Galfa Racing rotors on here as well, so she stops, she stops very well. Uh, the traction control on this model, this generation of KTM Super Duke was um, a bit Neanderthal, to be honest. It was a bit on off, so I just felt, it felt better for me to turn it off. Um, but yeah, I mean, as bikes get better and better, like all the new current super bikes and, you know, your new Ducati V4S, um, Street Fighter, um, you know, all those ones, even my, um, MT10 SP, which I've actually still got, um, that traction control is, is quite good. My, uh, phone is buzzing like crazy in my pocket for some reason. I think someone's trying to call me. I don't know about 
about you guys, but I hate um, driving behind, sorry, riding behind utes like this. I just feel like at any any point in time, because nothing's tied down, um, that you know those metal poles will come flying out at 80k an hour and just go straight through me. It, it's just a, it's not a very nice feeling. I'm just looking at that saw blade. You see on these compilations all the time that you know things fall off the back of utes like ladders and paint tins and. I even saw a video where, you know, a tow ball fell off um, and hit someone's windscreen, just went straight through their windscreen and into their um, passenger seat. So if that had have hit, you know, me for example, geez, I'd probably be dead. One thing I would say about this bike is you've got to be um, pretty careful with the speed because you've got so much torque, it just takes so little effort to go 10, 20k an hour over the speed limit and you don't even realise you're doing it and I'm from Australia and in Victoria particularly uh, the the speed cameras and the cops around here are just on fire they are ridiculous it feels like there's speed cameras on every intersection there's mobile speed cameras everywhere um, these cops out trying to get you it's just ridiculous. So I am trading this bike in. As I said at the start of the video, I am trading it in for another bike. Um, so I'm not selling it in, not riding at all. As I said, I've still got my um, MT10 SP at home. So that's still gonna be a fun thing to ride. But what I really wanted was, at this point in my life, I, I really wanna ride a motorbike, you know, every day. And, I mean, I could do that with this bike, but then, you know, the luggage and the fuel range and all that stuff and, you know, leaving it parked somewhere that I'm not really happy with, where people can look at it and touch it and all that stuff. That's, that's the reason why I don't ride this every day. Plus, I don't want to put many Ks on it. I mean, I've kept this thing absolutely mint, in mint condition. Um, I've spent a lot of money on it. And... You know, for the three years or so that I've owned it, I've absolutely loved it. It's been unreal. I wish I had ridden it more. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. So yeah, the new bike. Uh, I want something comfortable. I want something that I can, you know, tour on, travel interstate on, um, have pillion passengers on with no issues, and they're comfortable as well. I want some luxuries like, um, you know, heated grips, quick shifter, cruise control. Um, I want a comfortable seating position, good wind protection. So I want a bike that I'll be riding every day. Um, I don't want a bike where I have to, you know, worry about where I park it and and all that stuff, or worry about rocking, uh, you know, clocking up too many miles on it. And I want something, you know, fairly reliable too. And I went through so many, so I, w I went and looked at so many different bikes. Like I basically started from a clean slate again. I had to really think about what I wanted in a bike. How I was gonna ride it, how often I was gonna ride it. Um, you know, the insurance on it, you know, the running costs, warranty, all that stuff. So, I went around to so many dealerships, I sat on so many different bikes, I test rode a couple of bikes, um, and then I shortlisted a few. So, just to give you an example, um, it was so varied. It was so varied. I did, um, I even looked at the Kawasaki H2. SX SE Plus, I think it's called. Um, and I, I don't think I'd ever buy a. Um, I don't think I'd ever buy a um, Kawasaki, but I even looked at that just to rule that out. I also looked at the um, Yamaha MT. 
09 uh, Tracer GT, sorry, is it MT, yeah, MT09 Tracer GT, I looked at some Hondas, you know, the Africa Twins, um, I looked at quite a lot of stuff, um, even the Aprilias, I looked at the Aprilia Tuono, I looked at going back to getting sports bikes, so I looked at all the R1s, looked at the BMW S1000 RRs, I was looking at the um, Ducati, the new Ducati V4 uh, Street Fighter S. Uh, I looked at all those. I don't think at this stage in my life I'd actually go back to riding a sports bike again. Uh, maybe in the future I'll have my main bike, my you know commuter bike, and then I'll have a, a race bike as well. Uh, but for now. I think just one, well, two bikes. I think two bikes is enough. So yeah, I went through so many different types of bikes. Uh, but I short, I short this to, uh, say, a handful. And uh, one, I just kept coming back to this, this one bike because it basically ticked all the boxes. Um, and I, ha I haven't really, I've test ridden it. I haven't really given it a proper go uh, because you can't really do that on a test ride. Well, you can't here anyway. Like here in, here in Victoria, you've got to take it out, you know, quite some way to get, get to some uh, twisties. So, but I, you know, on the test ride, I could feel that, you know, it would have, um, it would have handled well. It was quite, quite powerful still. Obviously not as powerful as this. I didn't have the torque of this, but it's still, um, it's still a, a 1000. I looked at the um, Super Duke uh, GT as well. Looked at the brand new Super Duke. I thought, you know, maybe I might just, you know, upgrade to that. But then I thought about it. And I would have gone back to the same position that I'm in now. You know, I wouldn't want to ride it. I'd spend lots of money on it. I'd make it look awesome. Probably wouldn't go to track. So it kind of seemed like a bit of a waste. I want a bike that I can ride, you know, every single day and be, actually be functional. Be functional in terms of, you know, going up and getting my groceries, going to and from work, going to and from gym, Going, going to and from seeing my family and friends. Uh, nothing that's going to be so loud that I don't really want to ride it. This is not too bad. It is loud, but it's not too bad. Uh, it's got the full Akropovich Evo 2 titanium exhaust on it. So she does have a bit of a bark, but... Um, yeah, it's not too bad. I can't believe this is my last ride on this bike. Anyway guys, it's been an awesome bike. The next video you see from me will be on my new bike. I'll catch you guys then.